We've created a complete church check-in system available on our dedicated iPad check-in app. I'll show you how to set up and use the app for your church. And I brought Lori in to help me out. Now, Lori, where do you go to get the app? So Matt, you're gonna to go to the Apple App Store and you're going to search for Church Track Track Check-In, easy for me to say. Then you're gonna, it's gonna pop right up on your screen and you just download it. Download it from there. Yep. We'll also add a link to this menu in our articles and our user guides. So definitely check that out if that's the preferred way to get there. Now, once you've downloaded the app, how do you get into the app to use it? That's even simpler. All you do is use the credentials from your church track login in the church track check-in app. Yes. So we made it as simple as possible. Absolutely. You just use the same exact username and password or email address and password mm -hmm. to log into the check-in app that you do to log into the church track program itself, just to make it as easy and simple as possible. Now, once you're logged into the app, can you create an event for checking people in within the app or do you have to use the computer? Yes and no. Okay, please explain. So in the app, you can actually go to the header where it says children's ministry currently. You mm -hmm. click on this and it's going to bring up a menu where you can view current events that you have already created on your computer. Right. And or you can create a new event here. Perfect. And if you're familiar with creating events on the computer, the process is almost identical mm -hmm. in the app. You just enter the event's name, the, the date of the event, choose the calendar that it will appear on in the program, and then choose which groups you're using for check-in and assign that to the event. So Matt, the easiest way that I remember to do this is just work top to bottom. Of course. If you just fill in the it, fill in the blanks, it's the easiest thing to do in church track. One step at a time. Yep. Now we've created the event, but there's one more thing we need to do before we can start checking people in, and that's connecting a label printer to the app or right. to the iPad itself. Right. How do you do that within the app? Okay, Matt, in the upper left-hand corner of the application, you're going to go to the settings cogwheel. The second option here is printing. Right, under display. Right, yep. okay. There you will see printers. Yep. This will be the default printer that you set up when you set up your app. This is gonna be an option that you have when you're going through the actual beginning setup process. Yeah, 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 yeah. But this, you can you can connect a printer to the app when you're setting it up or you can skip that step right. if you're not ready to do that. So if you click the little blue button that says, or blue words that say Rollo, you're gonna have a list of printers. Yes. You choose the printer you want to use for label printing. And then it's, it's connected to the app. And then it's connected. We do need to point out though, the printer needs to be on your church's Wi-Fi network yes, in order for your app or your iPad to be able to find it. So you will have to set that up first before you can link it to the app itself. And that again, I think it's really important that we iterate that this is an iPad app. This is not a phone app. This is not a computer app. This is an iPad app. True, yes. Now, the event's created and the printer is ready to go and it's connected to the iPad. Let's How do we check people in? Okay, so you just simply close your settings window, go to your main screen here. Um, your default here is phone or name. You get to choose. Right, yeah. You can search, you can search someone by their last name or by their phone number, right? Okay. Put in four more digits. So I'll just type in a phone number, hit search. He's my van and light. It, and it pulls, up, it pulls up the names of the people in that family that that phone number belonged to. Correct. If you search by last name and you have multiple families with that same last name, you'll be taken to a screen that'll list the families. You just choose the family and then it'll take you to this screen. Correct, Matt. And okay. then, now that you're so in this screen, what do you do next? I can check the little circle, okay? And that gives me the print labels button at the top. That, yeah. and that's not live, if you will, until you select names. Okay. But it's also very important, Matt, that you can customize these name labels. Okay. So there's a little arrow on the far right side of the line where the name is. This allows you to enter an emergency contact phone number. It allows you to enter any allergies or medical issues that the child may have or the person any notes or special instructions. You also see that the group that they are attended in, mm -hmm. and, and, or you can add them to other groups. So right. if you have Sunday school and church, children's church going on at the Perfect. same time. So once I've selected the names, I just tap the print labels button and it sends and, it to the printer. And it even counts down on the screen for you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's one of my things. I just really like that. It's the little things. Now let's pretend we've checked this family in 
now the event's over and the parent has come to pick up the kid, can you do a checkout process? Absolutely, Matt. Perfect, let's, let's show them how to do that. So the checkout process is gonna be found under the little Rubik's Cube face over there, or the modes <laughs> menu. The Rubik's Cube. You pointed that out to me and it blew my mind. I hadn't made that connection, I love it. So yeah, in the top right-hand corner, just tap that, we call it modes, modes menu, menu, the modes button, and then choose the staff checkout right. option. And now, then, Again, yes. you can't check children out until you have made a selection. So in here, you can use the security label code right. that's on on the parent pickup tag, or you can use their phone number or their, um, their last, last name. name. Just like before. So just I'll like type before. in the same phone number as before, hit search, and it pulls up the same family. I haven't checked anyone in because I didn't actually hit the print labels button, but it would give me the option to tap on the names of Nick and Nora and Again, check them out. And it would check them out. It wouldn't print a label, but it would just mark them as checked out. And it would even give you the option to type in the name of the person of who, that picked them yeah, up. Yeah, who picked them up. It also puts a timestamp on that pickup. So yes. that's good to know as well for um, anything that happens. Because it shows up on the reports. Right. That'll actually be printed on the check-in and check-out reports that you can print from your church track account. Um, so what about guests, though? We've talked about how to check in a family. This is presuming that family is, is a member of the church. Or already in the database. Or yeah. already in the database. So what about guests or people who haven't been entered into the database? Can we do anything for them? Yes, so as long as you're in staff check-in. Okay, so let me go back in. You're gonna go back I, to I'll your go little into the, the modes menu, choose staff check-in. Let's just use the last name. I'll say your last name is Miles. I met somebody with that last name recently, so that's what's on my mind. When so I'll use Miles. It, Oh, you couldn't find me. That's because I'm a guest. I yeah. shouldn't be in there. So you can click the add family option and it's going to bring in a window that's going to let you add family members. So you're going to go in, add the family member, click that blue, opens up the screen, add the people here. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can add as many as you need to. But we need to mention. Oh, always add the parents first. Always Please add the don't parents put first. Little Billy as the as the first person because that's going to then assign the family name as Billy Miles and not the dad of Milton Miles. Yes, so just make sure you add the parents first and then the children to load them into the database properly. Correct. And just have all their information good and right. <laughs> now, in the world. Also, another thing we need to mention about adding new people is that this option, the ability to do that is not available in self check-in. That is correct. In the self check-in mode, only in the staff check-in because you right. don't want just anyone typing themselves in because that adds them to your database. And in church track, your pricing is based on how many people are in the database. Correct. So we don't want your guests accidentally pushing you into a higher price tier. All right, now we switched to checkout mode a moment ago. So mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about modes okay. for check-in and what okay. the differences are. So in the modes menu in the top left-hand corner, just tap that button. It takes you to that modes menu again. Um, let's actually really just focus on what's the difference between staff check-in and self check-in. The uh, permissions. Mm -hmm. So staff check-in allows a member or a volunteer, whoever's working, to add people to the database and check people in, check people out, and that kind of thing. Self check-in is literally only for checking in people that are in your database. Yep. This is locked out with a PIN number that you would create in yep. the database. Um, right here on the app, as you see, it says enter a new device pin. Yep. That will prevent people from leaving the check-in screen. Yeah, so if you set up self check-in, it restricts their some of their access to the Correct. other parts of the app, like adding a family or also the settings. Yeah. Like under self check-in, they can't go into the settings and make any changes to your app. Um, and it's also, again, locked by a pin. So right. once you initially set staff or self check-in, you type in that pin and you can't exit out of self check-in to another mode until you type in that pin again. Right. So just make sure only staff and volunteers know and that pin. And that's device and specific. It. Yeah, and it's device specific, that's right. So just make sure only a select few know what that pin is just right. to keep things right. secure. Now, what I love about self check-in though is that you can customize the station further. So it's not just a keypad. You can actually have more information displayed I, there. Kind how, of like a commercial. Yeah. How do you how do you customize the self check in station? So Matt, when you're in um, staff check in, you've got to go to the settings cogwheel. Then here you're going to have um, your display, and right. there's a pre check in display and a post check in display that applies to your self check in. Okay. Okay, so when you click it on the little arrow over there, you can go out and select an image. So if you have an event coming up 
um, that's fall festival and you want to um, advertise it to people because, mm -hmm. you know, I never make it into the church, so I never hear the announcements. I'm always late. Yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, it, it's a challenge getting all your kids dressed and their shoes on and their sippy cups ready and then loaded into the car. Yeah. And grandkids okay. get to the church on time. If you're late, you might miss that announcement but you can display that announcement on, on the check-in check station itself. And you can even write, print, uh, type in a message here. So right. if you don't want to advertise, you just want to say, hey, welcome to the church, so glad you came, or whatever, you can do that here. And then when you go back, you got a post check-in display that allows you to do the same thing. Same so thing. two points of contact here. Yeah, so this is something that they'll see when they first approach the station and when they're done with the check-in right. and walking away. Um, so you can have the same thing displayed both, just to hit them you know, twice, or have two different things displayed there just to really customize the whole right, just flow of things. Thanks for coming. Yeah, just saying thanks for coming. And while we're here, let's talk a little bit more about the different settings that can be customized in the app. So we talked about the pre-check-in display and the post-check-in display, but what are some other things that can be customized or managed here? So you can do your search method. So this is the default search method of how you want people to enter their information, whether it's by phone number or by family, by last name, okay? The date format, so you have the standard date format, but depending on your culture, you may have different formatting, Right. okay? Um, the app color, you know, you know <laughs> this is a big deal for me this. because I, you can do your branding. Yep, your church's branding, yep. You can coordinate your colors to go with your pre and post check-in. If you okay. really want to match things up, that'd be perfect. Because I'm, I, I do things like that. Um, it, it, but the color is unlimited, so yeah. you can do whatever you want to. And this changes the view of what people see. It's yep. really kind of cool. Perfect. Um, beyond just the display of things, though, under the printing menu. Yes. This is where you can connect to a printer, mm -hmm. um, and then just tap on the name of that that printer option, and then choose from the list just to make sure that it's all connected and ready to go. Something to point out here, Matt, enable printing on this device allows this your iPad to connect to a printer. Right. So earlier you said, I didn't actually check them in because I didn't print the labels. But if you disconnect that option, it still will check them in without printing the labels. Oh, perfect, okay. So if you're at an event where you need to check people in but don't need the tags, mm -hmm. the, the, the stickers, you don't right. need to, then exactly. you can just turn that off. Um, you can also choose the label dimensions, just depending on what the device is and what, what label options you have with that. Keep in mind here, you can't change the label size to something that you, do, you don't have in the label printer. Of course. Okay. Um, also, under the groups menu, this is where you can not only choose whether or not using a, like a group label will, will produce a label itself from the label printer, but you can also do something that you love to talk about. So in the, in your, like, we're going to just pick on the nursery here. Sure. So click on the nursery for me. That's going to open the slider. This allows you to change the print count. In other words, how many labels prints with the child's information on it. So this is a really big deal for, for babies. You've got, or toddlers, you've got the child on their back. You've got a cup, you've got a diaper bag and nursery workers don't always know what belongs to who. Right. So by doing this, you put the sticker on there and you can keep track of everything. And yeah. the kid goes home with everything they came to church with. So this is how you decide if you want only Ideal. one label to print per person within a specific group, mm -hmm. or if you want multiple, like you said, in this scenario also where you may need for, multiple for all to label everything. Right, but it also lets you change that check-in to name tags. So for oh, adults, if yeah. you have a ladies event and you just want everybody to have a name tag. That's legible. That's legible. It's gonna be a large first name and a smaller um, last name and mm -hmm. then people can identify you and it's kind of nice. Love it. Um, and other than groups though, there's also the security, security. settings. This is where you set that devi device pin to get in and out of Correct. the self check-in. And also, just for not just device security, but for your church's security and children's security, right. you can require the name of a pickup person during the checkout process here. Correct. That's how to use Church Track's iPad check-in app. If you need help, send us a support ticket or visit churchtrack.com support.